Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at um, this objective. So really what I wanted you guys to do is find C, that when I factor my C, I get a quantity squared. Okay, so here, the way that we do this is I take my B term, which is negative 6. So C is equal to negative 6 over 2 and I square it. So then that gives me negative 3 squared, which is 9. So C is equal to 9. Then when I do the other, this next one, 7 over 2, and I square it, um, I can't reduce. So I just square the top and square the bottom, and I get 49 over 4. So C is equal to 49 over 4. Okay. So now we are going to solve the equations by completing the square, which is what caused a little bit of an issue earlier. So let me be clear. I went through this process um, in class, but um, it did cause some confusion. In the end, what you will do to complete the square is step one. I'm going to move C to the side that doesn't have x, so minus 4. And I understand, like, it was like, oh, we got to the same place that we started off with when we were doing this in class, but I want you guys to understand the process. Okay, the second thing we will do is we will take b over 2, and we will square it, and we will add it to both sides of the equation. And the reason why I can do just regular b over 2 and squared is because there's a 1 in front of my x squared. So um, when there's a number other than 1, then we have to do it a little different. Okay, so x squared minus 4x, that's what we had before. And then I am adding plus negative 4 over 2, the quantity squared. And so this is equal to 21. And then I'm adding the same thing. What I do to one side of the equation, I must do to the other. Okay, so now what I end up with, and that's where everybody is all annoyed with me in class, but that's okay. So x squared minus 4x plus 4 is equal to 25. So then I'm going to factor. This is a perfect square. So two numbers that multiply to give me 4 that add to give me negative 4 are negative 2 and negative 2. So this is x minus 2 to the quantity squared is equal to 25. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to square root both sides of the equation to get rid of the squared that is outside the x minus 2. So the squared and the square roots cancel each other out. And then when I take the square root of both sides, I get a positive number and a negative number. So now I'm left with x minus 2 is equal to plus or minus 5. What this means is that I have x minus 2 is equal to a positive 5, or I have x minus 2 is equal to a negative 5. So then I get x is equal to 7, or x is equal to um, negative 3. And I can write this as negative 3 comma 7. And that is my solution. Now, if I don't ask you to solve by completing the square, then you don't necessarily have to, right? I can, I, if I don't say how to solve, I can have you guys solve by any means whatsoever. So in the end, you know, um, I should fill in your steps. So we square root both sides. So you get a plus or a minus, um, and then you solve both plus or minus equations. Okay, so now if I go to the next one, which we did not do in class, so I'm going to subtract my 144. So I get x squared plus 24x is equal to reduce, so that's 8. So I get 48 
on the right hand side. So now I'm going to take x squared plus 24x, and I'm taking half of my b term, and I'm squaring it, plus 24 over 2, the quantity squared. And this is equal to 48, and then plus, oops, 24 over 2, the quantity squared. So now what I get is x squared plus 24x plus 144 is equal to 48 plus 144. Okay, so now what I'm left with is I'll combine everything together. So on the left-hand side, I have 24 on the top, 144 on the bottom, so my two numbers are 12 and 12. So this becomes x plus 12, the quantity squared, is equal to 144 plus 48 um, is 2, 9, 192. Okay, so then I square root both sides. And I get plus or minus. So then I get an x plus 12 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 192. So square roots, 192 breaks down into 2 and 96, 2 and 30, not 32, just kidding, 2 and... Uh, 48, and then 2 and 24, 2 and 12, 2 and 6, 2 and 3. So now I have some pairs here. Pairs, pairs, pairs. So now I'm left with x plus 12 is equal to plus or minus root 4, root 4, root 4, root 3. So x plus 12 is equal to plus or minus 8 root 3. So then I subtract 12 from both sides. So x is equal to negative 12 plus or minus 8 root 3. And then I don't have to actually solve this equation out because I'm left with a right a weirdo uh, square root okay all right so now moving right along to example three here again x squared plus 18x is equal to four so x squared plus 18x and then plus 18 over 2, the quantity squared, is equal to 4 plus 18 over 2, the quantity squared. So I get x squared plus 18x plus somebody, plus um, 81 is equal to 4. plus 81. So now what I'm left with is a x plus 9 the quantity squared because I have 18 and 81 so it's 9 and 9 is equal to 85. I square root both sides. So 85 is 5 and um, 1 17. And so it doesn't break down anymore. So I'm left with x plus 9 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 85. So then I just subtract 9. So I get negative 9 plus or minus root 85 because I can't simplify that anymore. And now this is the one that everybody was all upset about. Okay. So 
it changes when the number in front of x squared is something other than 1. Okay, so in this case, I do the same exact thing. Oops. And now I factor out a 4. Not an x also, just a 4. So I'm left with x squared minus 3x is equal to 27. So now I complete the square. 4x squared minus 3x plus negative 3 over 2 the quantity squared is equal to 27. And then now this is plus 4 times your negative 3 over 2 the quantity squared. Okay, so now what you're left with is a lovely fraction that nobody liked, x squared minus 3x plus 9 over 4 is equal to 27 plus 4 times 9 over 4. Okay, so now I have 4, x squared minus 3x plus 9 over 4 is equal to 27 plus 9. Okay, so 4x squared minus 3x plus 9 over 4 is equal to 36. So x squared minus 3x plus 9 over 4 is equal to 9, because I can divide both sides by 4. Okay, so that's what happened here between these two steps. Now when I factor, I am looking for two numbers that add to give me negative 3 that multiply to 9 fourths. That's negative 3 halves and negative 3 halves. The coincidence between this is that um, my negative 3 halves is here, and that's the value that's here. It will always work that way because you're creating yourself a perfect square. So now this factors to x minus 3 halves. The quantity squared is equal to 9. So I square root both sides of my equation. And I get x minus 3 halves is equal to plus or minus 3. So now I'm running out of room. So now I have x minus 3 halves is equal to a positive 3, and x minus 3 halves is equal to a negative 3. It's one or the other, so we solve both equations. So I have, oops, sorry about that. x is equal to 3 plus 3 halves, or x is equal to negative 3 plus 3 halves, right? So I have to find a common denominator, which is 2, so this is 6 over 2, just kidding, 6 over 2 plus 3 over 2, and then this is uh, negative 6 over 2 plus 3 over 2. So then I get x is equal to 9 over 2, and x is equal to negative 3 over 2. And then I have both of these solutions, which I can write as negative 3 halves comma 9 halves. Okay, and that is how we do it with weirdo fractions. So now I'm going to go ahead and let's pick some ones that um, for you guys to practice.